We're actually moving on to the SA Pro-Am Super Lightweight Men's title with an upper weight limit of 63.5 kgs. Introducing to you first, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner with a record of 10 wins and 2 losses, fighting out of Pride Fighting Academy. Please welcome Denver Isaacs. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner with a record of six wins, three losses and two draws, fighting out of Iron Tiger, please welcome Michael Pazanenhout! Move now to the first of our SA Pro Am title fights. This one between the champion Michael Bazelnut fighting out of the red corner, fighting out of Iron Tiger, who faces probably one of his toughest opponents we've seen in the TFP ring, Denver Isaacs, fighting out of Pride Fighting Academy in the blue corner. Yeah, I agree, Carl. I mean, Michael is looking to make his second defense this evening. Um, Denver Isaacs, obviously um, a very good opponent and a national champion in his own right on the boxing scene. Um, he's actually a SA national boxing champion. So we've kind of got a champ versus champ matchup here. But of course, Michael being the reigning Muay Thai champion and looking to make that defense this evening. Excited to see, you know, um, what this fight actually brings to the table. And we've said this before, every time we see Michael in the ring, you know, he always brings something new, he's always evolving in the fight game, which is always great to see as well. Obviously no. fought his first Muay Thai fight back at TFP1 in 2021. Can you imagine, Carl, that was so, it feels like such a long time ago, he actually made his fight against Shane Deacon, yeah. who is now on the pro ranks, actually fighting the title eliminator late in the evening. So, these fighters are showing some really good growth on the TFP or fight promotion cards. Michael put his hand out there to touch gloves, but I don't think Denver did that on purpose, but <laughs> turned around <laughs> and bounced away before he even saw the hand coming out, maybe. It looks like he's just bursting with energy at the moment, so, you know, he's ready to go. Yeah, that's one of the things about, it, uh, about Denver as well, is that we, we know he comes with, like, a wealth of experience. He's got 12 fights behind his name in boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, and he's just coming to show what he can do here in the Muay Thai ring against the champion, Michael Bezeda. I wonder if we're going to see quite an unorthodox style from Denver Isaacs in terms of Muay Thai, um, with Michael, you know, um, fighting out the art of Muay Thai, art of Thai, with more traditional Muay Thai. 
with that stuff. Sorry, Iron Tiger. Um, sorry about that, guys. The one and only. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bouncy style, yeah. Maybe a bit more like a karate MMA style from Denver. Reminiscent somewhat of an old Conor McGregor style of fighting, bouncing in and out. Maybe even a little bit of Wonder Boy. As I say, that he puts a little oblique teep to the, the thigh. Movement, very good though. Michael staying composed. Comes in, takes one. Big shot from the softball opponent. So only game plan obviously from Denver is to you know make Michael kind of chase him around the ring and make him miss. Um, Michael would be smart just to cut off the ring and kind of cut off Denver's space and then obviously go in and score some points. This might also be where we start to see, you know, Michael trained exclusively in Muay Thai. It's a little bit different when it comes to the type of clinch work, the sweeps, the elbows on the inside. I mean, these things obviously apply in an MMA game too, but when you're working exclusively on that one style, it's kind of thing you start to sharpen the most. Nice work there from Denver. Maybe rocks Michael a little bit. Definitely a big game plan is to, to hit that front leg of Michael with that big kick. A lot of movement from Denver, obviously. You can see his body in and out, bouncing around, so sort of fainting position. He's trying to unsettle Mike, uh, Michael's rhythm a little bit. And Michael, obviously, with a calm approach, sort of walking him down, trying to cut into his space here at the moment. I say the crispness of uh, Denver's shots are big hooks, you know, putting full body into it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. one or two big shots that I think stunned Michael a little bit. Ooh, goes for a flying knee there, Michael. Just moves out the way, clinches up and bands a few elbows on the inside. I don't know if you saw, but a couple of times now when Michael's actually cut the the space off, he's thrown in that left hand and that left hand's landed flush. So he's moving and moving and with his space is getting cut off, he's actually you know, trying to fight his way out of the corner. He seems to be very calm and composed at the beginning of this first round. Yeah, and that's something, especially if you're fighting an unorthodox fighter, it doesn't necessarily help you go and try and match that energy. Sometimes you need to be the composed one. Yeah, I agree. You don't want to get sucked into that game plan. That's, if that's not your style, um, you're obviously going to be able to add a bit of a disadvantage if you try and match your opponent. You've got to fight your way and kind of suck him into your rhythm. Maybe he needs to try and slow that down a little bit and bring him into his space. Michael is doing well though to hit that outside leg. Often. That front leg of Denver's. You know, it's obviously going to slow him down a little bit as well the movement. Good first round, Paul. Nice round from both guys there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really nice matchup. It's two very contrasting styles. For sure. And I guess what we're expecting from both these guys is to try and turn that around, you know, and take your opponent's strength, make it the weaknesses if, if uh, Denver's moving around a lot, then Michael doesn't have to chase him. Let him come to you, shut down that game plan. If he just follows him around the ring, he's going to walk, walk straight into those big punches that Denver's trying to set up, you know, lure him in, uh, counts on that. And for Michael, just to use the other tools that he has, he's got the teeth that we haven't seen yet. You know, like, if Denver's going to bounce around, put that teeth up to just to keep that distance so he doesn't get to shoot back in again. Yeah, yeah you need to go chase him down and go box him. I think it's your it. strengths with the, the tool set that you have as well. I think you just need to try and break that rhythm a little bit. Yeah. Because um, it's difficult to hit an opponent that's constantly moving in and out, fainting all the time. So if you can break that rhythm down a little bit, um, that will definitely help. I think the tips would be... Definitely like to see some more of that tips taking effect. That being said as well, what Michael has done, he, he, he throws a couple of feints every now and again, which also breaks Denver's rhythm. We've seen him like switch and then you know just see what Denver does. So he, he's definitely thinking on his feet here. I think that a bleed kick is maybe putting him off though, because that really comes from long distance and as he's coming in, stops his momentum and, and those are quite painful kicks as well. Yeah, and it's quite, uh, it's a quite a quick one and he seems to be putting a lot of force behind it. 
again because he's got such a wide base. You know, he's, he's pushing off that back leg far and getting getting good reach and power into it, just like that. Yeah. And that's you know actually fairly easy to defend if you can see it coming. It's just to lift the knee, you know, go for a bit of a check. So they just like he did now. So yep. he kicks into his leg instead of uh, into the knee instead of into his, his thigh. But it's not always easy to see when you hit it hunting for the head. As I say that. He walks into a big shot from Denver, but responds in kind with a nice elbow and soft as Michael. Yeah, again, uh, Denver hits him with the left when he's in the corner and there's no more space for him to move. Yeah, Michael's got him backed up, kicking the legs. Denver using the powerful boxing approach. Michael trying to suck out, the, suck out that movement by hitting Denver's legs constantly. I almost think Michael needs to throw in some body kicks. Uh, Denver's stance is quite side on. So when he does come in for the punches, get your head off the centre line and throw some hard body kicks in there just to get that, that wind out of the system a little bit. Great low kick there for Michael as well. Sort of buckled Denver's leg as he was coming in. You start to see it starting to welt up and swell a bit. Very red on his front leg, the left leg. As I said, he also switches stance now and then back to the south pole again. That's definitely not a bad idea. I mean, if you can do some damage to the front leg, that movement will definitely slow down. Yeah, that seems to be an approach that Michael's using quite well as well, you know, using that low kick on the outside. But as you say, maybe a nice big right kick to the body, you know, that, that's the open side for a southpaw fighter. Yeah. Ooh, nice step in, knee there from Denver. Michael answers one, a knee of his own. I am liking Denver's movement. I, I tend to enjoy watching fighters that move quite a bit. Really. So he looks quite fluid and he's, he's got like a good center of balance when moving in and out of the strikes. Maybe we should check a couple of that kicks and then obviously throw in some counters. With his stance being so wide and with him standing a bit more side on, it's quite difficult to, to check the kicks, especially yeah. because you prefer to check towards the outside at a 45 degree angle. Ooh, nice jumping knee there. Michael shifts, making the knee just nice. Denver's hands also a little bit low, as we said, you know, Michael's been doing a lot of low kicks, so you might be expecting that, and then a kick comes high. I know Ishak warned me not to say guys are going to be taking high kicks, because when I do, it tends to <laughs> happen. Yeah, I think um, the commentator is cursed the deal, so we might want to stay away from that for now. <laughs> Great work from both guys again this round. It's good to see how they um, are sort of figuring each other out. Like Michael in the beginning, in the first round, you could see he, was, he wasn't too, too sure about Denver's movements, right? Um, his hands and some of the strikes that he's been throwing. But I think for the last bit of round two, you can kind of see Michael starting to work out certain aspects of Denver's game plan. Um, and he seems to be a bit more comfortable with certain aspects of the fight, learning to work with or defend um, a couple of the strikes. The oblique kick for one of the last couple of it didn't actually land and he's also doing a better job at evading sort of some of the punches. But yeah, it's, it's quite a good uh, chess match that we're watching, watching here. We said earlier that we've you know, seen Michael evolve over, over the different fights that we've seen him uh, compete in. But yeah. even, you know, he obviously has quite a high fight IQ. We see him evolving in the actual fight, adapting to what his opponent's doing. Um, Denver is still keeping the same kind of approach, moving around a lot. But you can even see sometimes when something that he's trying to do isn't working, he's actually got that look of frustration on his face. And Michael, very calm, you know, taking it all in his stride. And again, as you say, like learning as he goes, which is also great to see. Pretty good matchup. I'm really excited for the final round, Paul. All the biscuits to play for, yeah. Still. Lots of movement from Denver Isaacs fighting out of PFA. Michael's done well to slip in some elbows there as uh, Denver's been clinching up with him. Denver's still power heavy, some big shots. Well, that was a quick slip of that um, sort of 80 if um, uh, Michael. I think with Timber having quite a heavy base, Michael will probably do better in the clinch to not look for so many sweeps, but rather to try and like, you know, tip, uh, sorry, not tip to, to knee the body, look yep. for those elbows again, which he's finding some success in. Nice big body kick. First time we saw that one, went a little up more towards the head. Takes a groin shot there. I think also with Denver's hands being a little bit low down in the exchanges, that body kicks, it's going to be hard for him to 
sort of lean back and evade it. So yeah. it's going to land it on the arm, so it's going to land it to the body. So these fighters obviously have to throw it all in there in the final round. Um, just to kind of sway the judge's decision at the end of this one. Because it's actually a very close fight. It's going to be a difficult one to tell or to call. And of course the judges are looking for that ascendancy in this last time in a, in a fight that has been close. They're going to be looking for who's looking less fatigue, who's throwing better technique, landing good powerful strikes. Even things like the evasion we just saw there from Michael, you know, these are things judges are seeing. We saw like a big dump from them though, come really speaking. But Michael's doing well, as you say, every time he's clinching, he's getting at least one elbow in there, a couple of knees. Yeah, he's doing very well. And that should be counting in his favor. Yeah, 100% well. Every time they clinch, immediately he's throwing a nice short elbow straight through. It might look, you know, from a, an outside perspective like he's getting sort of bullied around, but he's the one actually landing most of the strikes in the clinch. Denver doing well to try and dominate body position, but at the same time he's not looking for those strikes as much. And Denver's coach is calling for him to keep his distance as he comes in with some launching shots. Yeah, I think they, they get the sense that he's, uh, you know, losing some points in the exchange once they clinch up. And obviously when he's shooting from the outside, it's nice it's by avoiding that combination. Or something he's shooting in his last second for the round, look for. I think we're seeing also Denver maybe, you know, taking a little bit of strain, a little bit of fatigue, so rushing to try and close that clinch. Big body knee there from Michael. Oh, and a great sweep as Denver's trying to force the clinch. Again, Cole cool. throwing those short elbows and scoring those points in the exchange, in the close exchange. And Denver obviously not as well versed in the clinch. Boxing's great, but he's definitely getting screwed a little bit in the, in the clinch in terms of technique. But he's still doing well to, to force the opponent pushing him around. Griffin Nicholas right there just his elbow pads. Jazz and D's too much. Oh, this is sliding in the clinch exchange while they doing a lot of grappling. At the end, this earlier, earlier game plan was working quite well. And now at the end, maybe, well, like you say, it's a little bit of fatigue coming into play. But he's starting to get into that close exchange. And when he's jumping in to take a shot, they're locking up into the clinch. And once they get into the clinch, Michael is the one scoring the points. Doctors have been all over here. Might have, you can't see from this angle, but maybe a cut from an elbow or... Trying to see if they can stop the bleeding. Even through those elbow pads, I mean, we both know they still a lot of blunt trauma there. Uh, they sometimes have a scratchy, this tape on them, that can also cut you. But you can cut just as easily from the club. Wow, the crowd is standing on their feet, everyone falling here. And the fight is over. Massive Walton cut on his right, just under his eye. Doctors have called a stop to this one. Michael was hating out. Retains his title against a tough, tough opponent. On the fight, well, uh, the champ obviously digging really deep there to come through at the end. Obviously, the fight was called because there's a cut under the eye. Um, if it was just a you know normal nose bleed or so, that fight would have continued. But you can see a visible cut on Michael just under the right eye.
Ladies and gentlemen, this fight saw its conclusion via Dr. Stoppage. With only nine seconds remaining in the final round. With your winner and still SA Pro Am Super Lightweight Champion, Michael Bazadenhoe!